Uh, hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I am going to continue uh, talking about the piano basics. Um, and this week's topic, I will be focusing on voicing. And of course, for all the pianists, when we talk about voicing or different voices, the first composer that came to our mind would be J.S. Bach. Uh, right, he has on the average, probably three to four uh, voices. And some extremes, he even had a piece that has seven voices controlled by, by two hands. Really, he was doing this to an uh, extreme uh, ability. Um, however, um, this voicing really doesn't only appear in fugues or contrapunto music or uh, multiple layers uh, or, or what we call uh, multiple voices uh, what is that polyphony <laughs> okay so the first thing actually came to my mind when we talk about voicing especially when i'm teaching my undergrad students is how they play chords yeah because most people think that when you play chords, the most important thing is to play them together, right? Of course, that's difficult when you first were introduced to chords. So let's say if you do a three note at chord or a four note at chord, yeah, very naturally people will just play them together and they all sound equally loud or equally soft. However, usually that is not the case. Um, the habit, the custom of listening to Western music, okay, uh, is to hear the highest note and the lowest note, okay. Uh, when we do solfege, when we do ear training, if you hear a three voices, or sometimes if you hear chords or chord progressions, uh, the custom is to really hear the top voice the top line first and then the bass line and then fill in the middle so naturally a composer would put a melody or a more important line on top of the chords uh, so that the audience can hear them right so instead of we should play we should emphasize the top of the chord. And this is, of course, not 100% of the, the, the time, but I would say more than 80% of the time, if there is no indication, we should emphasize the top. And how did I do that? Um, I live in a ski state, right, Utah. Uh, if you ever visit Salt Lake Airport, I think a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, I saw a advertisement saying like 130 something tracks for skiing within 30 minutes of <laughs> driving. Um, so, but I don't ski because obviously it's a little dangerous, risky for my arms. Um, but I have many friends who do skiing or ski board, uh, the, the snowboard, um, and they say, that when you try to turn, right, it's really a matter of switching the weight, right? If you want to turn this way, then you put most of your weight upon your left leg. If you want to turn the other way, then you put it upon your right leg. So here it's the same. We don't have two fingers, we have five, fortunately. So when we want to emphasize the top, then we put more weight on the top note and then the other two is just like you know you're, you're barely touching the note but yeah and or we can do the other way around if we want to emphasize the lower note then we just put the weight upon the thumb in case of the left right hand so yeah, this is the, where the weight is then Of course, there are a couple of tricks um, when we do this. Number one is that 
um, in order to switch the weight, we have to also switch the elbow. Yeah. So when we want to do something more towards the left side of the right hand, then the, el the elbow, we want to raise it so that it adds more weight upon the thumb. But then if we want to emphasize the top, which is the natural position, the right side of the right hand, then this will be lowered. Yeah. And also, uh, one thing I find really, really helpful, um, and I don't see a lot of students do, um, is to double the fingers. Um, so to put weight is, of course, one thing. The other thing, like I talked about about two weeks ago, support of the fingertips. And of course, if weights stack up two fingers, then it's much stronger support. So sometimes my fourth finger would be on top of my pinky. If I really want to nail that top, yeah? And sometimes it's possible for me to do third finger on top of the second for a stronger support. Um, and of course, to play chords is, is not the whole thing about uh, bringing voices and we sometimes have to face Bach and we sometimes have to face Chopin, Rachmaninoff and you know, if perhaps if you uh, look at any composer after Bach, everything, everyone is influenced by Bach. Um, so when we have multiple voices, which when we have uh, polyphony, left hand controls one voice or right hand controls one voice, um, we have to find a solution to emphasize one, right? Uh, or to at least bring out one more. Um, and how do we do that? Uh, we always have to think both to the both ends. One is to make sure this one we want to emphasize is louder or deeper, more singing. And the other one is less. Right? This is almost like in a choir practice or sometimes in a performance, you see the voices, right? If it's the alto voice wants to be heard or the, the conductor wanted them to be heard, then they step up, right? And then the other voices will step back. So the same thing here, if I give example with the third ballad, which I just performed, if the first time I want to emphasize the top line, then all others are less, but... Yeah. But the second time, I think, when we have this again, yeah, then the left hand has these middle voices, then... other the top is much less than the this is more emphasis but again when we emphasize a voice and we want other audience to to notice yeah the actually the most important is not to bang it not to yeah to just to or to play it loud it's the most important thing is to phrase it so that not only it's musical yeah, it moves ups and downs. Yeah, the first time I do this, I have a diminuendo. Yeah, and and if I do this with the middle voice, the tenor. I do a crescendo and then a diminuendo. Yeah, this might be a, a bad example, but uh, yesterday I was talking with a friend who who fishes. Uh, he he told me that you know in the winter then the the uh, the fish the trout, uh, which is uh, uh, you know you see that a lot in in the waters in Utah. 
they like jigs, right? So you have to make sure it shines and it moves.、Um, I guess it's the same thing for the audiences. If everything stays still, even this voice is much louder than the rest, then they don't see it. But if that moves ups and downs, then they got attracted to that, and they realize, oh, there is another voice, or or that is the one, the voice you want to bring out. So、uh, always make movements, even when it comes when it comes to、uh, voicing. And again, I probably only covered a little bit of <laughs> of voicing, and there are many other situations, many many other solutions to this problem.、Um, so if you have questions, you please leave comments, and we can create a format, create a forum for people to discuss anything related to piano playing under my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.